Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Nadia and this is the place where we get real. And today I want to get real about vaginal odors and what a vagina should smell like and more specifically what sort of smells should be cause for concern so if you've ever worried about any kind of smell you've noticed coming from your vagina or any kind of discharge that has ever accompanied a particular smell then make sure you keep on watching welcome back to my channel are you serious with me oh my god oh my god <laughs> Now, I do obviously want to preface this video by saying I am not a medical expert. I am not a doctor. If you are ever concerned about anything that's going on with your vagina or your vaginal odor or discharge, it's always safe to seek the advice of a medical professional. I know that it can be a little bit awkward going to your doctor when it comes to down there, but trust me, ladies, doctors have seen it all before. <laughs> it's really nothing to be embarrassed about and it's so important to prioritize your vaginal health and your sexual health. Now, with that said, I wanted to make this video today because I made a video recently talking about what a vagina should smell and look like and you guys really loved it. I got a great response from it, specifically from a lot of you saying that you felt really relieved to realize that your vagina was actually totally normal. Now, if you haven't seen that video, I will link it up here. It's a good one actually to go and watch before we dive into this video because it's going to give you some foundational knowledge about what you should really expect from a vagina which let's face it is not really something we learn in school now today i want to go a bit deeper and look at some of the warning signs that something could be going on with your vagina what you should consider as healthy and what you should consider as a reason to go and see your doctor or your OBGYN. and of course i can't talk about vaginal odors without talking about vaginal discharge. So I'm gonna pretty much break this video down into segments, talking about the different types of discharge and the smells that can accompany them and which are the ones that might indicate that something is going on with your health. So for those of you that don't know what discharge is, discharge is essentially what you see when you take your underwear off, when you're getting changed or when you're going to the restroom, you'll notice inside your underwear, there will be a little bit of fluid. And for some women that can be clear and slippery, or it might be kind of more thick and mucusy, or it might even be a little bit more on the white and creamy side. All of the types of discharge that I just described are considered to be healthy discharge. This is the normal discharge that women experience throughout the month. It comes from your vagina and it comes out of there for a really smart reason. And that's because it's your vagina's way of essentially keeping its pH balanced and cleaning itself out. And this is why I talked in my last video about vaginas as to why women do not need to douche. You do, do not need to be using so soaps and deodorants on your vagina because it's already self-cleansing. That is the purpose of your discharge. So if you've ever been embarrassed about having discharge, please don't be because every single woman experiences discharge and it's totally normal. There are a few more suspect types of discharge that you want to watch out for and some odors that can accompany those. We do know that for women, the discharge tends to change depending on where you are in your cycle. So around the time of ovulation, your discharge can get quite slippery and clear and maybe a little bit sticky. Now, of course, that's not a guarantee that you have ovulated. The only way you can know that is obviously to do things like checking your basal metabolic temperature and obviously going and consulting an OBGYN. Now, while a creamy kind of whitish color is totally normal and healthy for discharge, a yellowy colored discharge is definitely not healthy. And if you notice that through the month, your discharge is getting distinctively more yellow in color. And specifically, if it is accompanied by a fairly strong and fairly foul kind of odor, that is almost certainly a sign that something is up. It can be a sign of an STI, which is a sexually transmitted infection, or 
it can be a sign of another type of infection. What's really important is that you go to a doctor and you get it checked out if you do have one of these signs going on. The good news is if it's an STI, the vast majority of STIs are super treatable and they're certainly not something to be embarrassed of. Most people who are sexually active have at some point in their life had an STI in the same way that most people who are socially active have at some point caught a cold or flu. It's really nothing to be embarrassed of. Most STIs can be treated with antibiotics or even antibiotic type creams and some of them can be treated as quickly as a week or two before you're back to normal health. Now, brown discharge is something that can occur for a lot of women. It's something that I've personally experienced many times before, and that's because you are essentially getting a bit of the old period blood coming out in your discharge. So when blood is really fresh, it tends to be really bright red in color. And then you'll notice when you get your period, as the days go on, your period color tends to go from that bright, vivid red to more of a dark brownish kind of color. And and that's because that blood has been exposed to air for longer and so it's oxidizing and it turns dark. So it just essentially means that it's old blood. It's the last kind of bits coming out and that can be mixed in with your discharge and cause a brown discharge. But if you notice that you're getting it regularly at different times in the month, particularly if you're someone who is older and has gone through menopause where you definitely shouldn't be getting any kind of bleeding at all, it's definitely something to go and see your gyno or your doctor about. And that's because it could be a sign that you have some sort of menstrual irregularity going on that could essentially indicate an underlying health condition. There's a good reason that the sick face emoji is green and that's because green anything usually indicates something is up with our health any part of our body starting to turn green is an indication that there is absolutely some sort of an infection going on. And that is specifically true if that is in your vaginal discharge. If your vaginal discharge is green, that's definite cause for concern. It almost certainly indicates that you've got some sort of a bacterial infection or a sexually transmitted infection going on and you should go straight to your doctor and go and get it checked out. Now, one kind of unhealthy type of discharge that it's estimated up to 90% of women experience at some point during their lives is the discharge that kind of comes out clumpy and it sort of looks a little bit like cottage cheese and it can be accompanied with a little bit of itchiness. If you notice that you're feeling like you constantly have to duck into dark alleys to itch your vulva. <sighs> oh no. Oh my God, what is wrong with me? And when you pull your underwear down, you've also got a little bit of clumpy, white cottage cheese kind of discharge. That can often be a sign that you have thrush or a yeast infection. And that is essentially caused by your vagina's pH balance being thrown out. Things like stress, having a poor diet, specifically a diet that's high in sugar, which is something that yeast feed off, can definitely set off a yeast infection. And a big one is antibiotics, because when we take antibiotics for any other type of infection we've got going on, they do a really good job of killing off all the bad bacteria in our body, but they also unfortunately have the added side effect of also killing off all the good bacteria. And we need good bacteria in our bodies as women in order for our vaginas to stay healthy. So when that bacteria level falls too low, we can end up with thrush. So a good way to actually just keep your vagina really healthy is to take a really high quality probiotic every day. And you can take a regular probiotic or there are actually lots of brands of probiotics out there that make specific probiotics that are designed specifically for women's vaginal health. So I definitely recommend doing that. That's something that I do every day, every morning when I get up, I pop 
a high quality probiotic. And another thing that you can obviously do to prevent yeast infections is try to eat a fairly healthy diet. It's okay, obviously, to indulge. We all have sugar cravings, but if you're eating tons of sugar, that can definitely throw your pH balance off. And I wouldn't recommend going and having sex while you have thrush. Now, unlike some of the other things we've talked about in this video, thrush is not something that you can transmit to someone else but it can be really unpleasant to have sex while you have thrush because your vagina is actually going to feel quite raw it can really sting to kind of have anything in there and it's just going to be generally unpleasant so i would recommend against it now the best way to treat thrush if you think you have it i would obviously recommend going to your doctor just to make sure but otherwise if it's something you've had before and you're fairly confident that you have you can just go straight to your local pharmacist and ask for a thrush treatment. There's usually a couple of types that you can choose from and you can buy them over the counter without a prescription. One is a cream that you essentially put inside your vagina and you usually do it for a few days and the other one is a tablet that you take. But like I say, my recommendation obviously is to check with your doctor first just to make sure that that's definitely what's going on and that there's not something else going on. Now, there are a lot of videos about treating thrush naturally. I'm a little bit dubious about some of those just because I worry that if you're doing these things you you know it's not essentially medically advised and so you could end up doing yourself a little bit more harm than good and also you could be delaying actually getting better especially if it turns out that you don't even have thrush and that cottage cheese discharge might be a sign of something completely different. So always see your doctor. That's really the message in this video. If you notice a change in smell, color, just texture of your discharge, then it's just best to see your doctor. I personally see a female doctor. It just makes me feel a little bit more comfortable talking about vaginal stuff, having my regular checkups, and I see a doctor that, you know, I feel really comfortable with. So do put time into making sure also that you have a doctor that makes you feel comfortable enough that you're not sort of avoiding going to see the doctor when something is potentially going on downstairs. If you'd like to see more videos on vaginal health, and just what vaginas should and shouldn't sort of do in terms of how they function, smell, taste, all of that fun jazzy stuff, then give this video a thumbs up so that I know you want more of this content. And if you're new here and you want more videos about women's health, sexual health, sexual pleasure in general, and some crazy bits and pieces from my life, then make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell as well so that you can be notified when my videos go live. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Mwah.